So friends, as you undoubtedly know by now, two of Donald Trump's co-conspirators, two of his criminal associates, two of his co-defendants in the Georgia RICO case have flipped. They've pleaded guilty and they've agreed to cooperate with District Attorney Fawny Willis. They've agreed to testify truthfully against all other co-defendants, including Donald Trump. So what does it mean for the Georgia State RICO case and Donald Trump's other prosecutions moving forward? Well, we're going to talk about the top five takeaways from Powell and Chesbro flipping. Let's talk about it because justice matters. Hey all, Glenn Kirshner here. So friends, huge developments, consequential developments in the Georgia State RICO prosecution of Donald Trump and his criminal associates. These are the kind of developments that would probably register about a 9.7 on the Donald Trump legal Richter scale. Sidney Powell and Kenneth Chesbro have pleaded guilty and agreed to cooperate. They have flipped. They will be testifying witnesses against Donald Trump and all of the other co-conspirators in the Georgia RICO case. I want to talk about the top five takeaways. There are more than five, but let's try to focus on the top five takeaways from this new development. And I want to start with just a little bit of the new reporting. This from USA Today. Headline, ominous sign for Donald Trump. Guilty pleas from Chesbro. Powell raised the stakes in Georgia. And that article begins... The latest guilty pleas from two key allies in Donald Trump's high-profile Georgia election interference case put new pressure on the former president and raised questions about whether his once loyal associates may one day flip on him. Two attorneys, Kenneth Chesbro and Sidney Powell, pleaded guilty to related crimes this week and agreed to testify against other defendants. They had been charged with playing separate roles in an alleged multi-pronged conspiracy to overturn the results of the 2020 presidential election. Coming after a third defendant, Scott Hall, pleaded guilty in September, their deals bolster the weapons in prosecutors' toolbox and may pressure other defendants to flip, a move that would raise the legal stakes for Trump. Okay, friends. What are the top five takeaways from this blockbuster legal development? Well, let's start with Sidney Powell. And yes, I'm going to go there. Sidney the Kraken Powell, because that's going to become important in a few minutes. Remember, she was the one who infamously said she's going to release the Kraken, by which she was trying to convey that she had such blockbuster evidence of voter fraud that all of the legal challenges she was going to bring in court would prove that Donald Trump really won the 2020 presidential election and Joe Biden lost. She was going to release the Kraken. Well, now that she has decided to plead guilty, she's flipped. She's cooperating. She's going to testify against all of the other co-defendants in the Georgia case. Um, we don't know precisely what evidence she has against the other co-defendants but we have a pretty darn good idea. Because remember, she was in the Oval Office for one or two meetings after Donald Trump lost the election. And at the time, he was putting together the plan to both attack the Capitol on January 6th and use the fake elector scheme to try to defeat Joe Biden's win. She was in the room with Donald Trump during what may prove to be the most important period as far as proving Donald Trump's guilt. So I have to believe, friends, that she will have some directly and sharply incriminating evidence against Donald Trump, probably out of his own mouth. So for one, 
Sidney Powell will be able to provide some really important incriminating evidence, not only against Donald Trump, but against her sort of de facto co-counsel in this corrupt scheme to file bogus lawsuits to try to defeat the election's results. Rudy Giuliani and probably others, Jenna Ellis, and we don't know who else. So that's the first takeaway. Sidney Powell, I believe, brings to the table some really damning evidence against some of her criminal associates, some of her co-conspirators. Okay, takeaway number two, Kenneth Chesbro. What does he bring to the table? Well, maybe he interacted directly with Donald Trump and will be able to incriminate Donald Trump with some of the evidence he is providing to District Attorney Willis. Maybe not, but because he is one of the architects of the fake elector scheme, um, he can very likely provide some really incriminating information against John Eastman, one of the other co-defendants, one of the other criminal associates who was involved in the fake elector scheme. And Chesbro can probably provide information about lots of other defendants, but we're going to have to wait and see you know, when and if he testifies at future trials to see exactly what kind of information and evidence Kenneth Chesbro brings to the table now that he has pleaded guilty, flipped, and agreed to cooperate. Takeaway number three, or this might be kind of 2A, you may have heard Chesbro's lawyer recently say in an interview, oh, I don't expect my client to, you know, directly incriminate Donald Trump. Well, can I translate that? I, I can't say whether that's true or false, but can I translate it as far as what I'm hearing? Can you imagine if Kenneth Chesbro's lawyer gave an interview and said, listen up out there, especially all of you Trump supporters, my client, Kenneth Chesbro, is about to produce some really damning evidence against your hero, Donald Trump. Hold on tight. Is there a defense attorney in the world who would put his or her client in that dangerous position by announcing that, yes, he will incriminate the hero of the MAGA cult? Of course not, because we know what that would inspire Donald Trump and his base, his supporters, his cult to do. And Kenneth Chesbro and his family and his friends and anybody within arm's reach would then be put in danger by Donald Trump. I am not suggesting Kenneth Chesbro's lawyer is misrepresenting anything. I think he's representing his client's interests and trying to protect his client in the process. But I'm not going to buy in to what defense attorneys for the various defendants and cooperating witnesses say, I'm going to watch what their clients testify to. Three, what do these guilty pleas mean for the federal case? Because as of right now, Kenneth Chesbro and Sidney Powell have flipped in the Georgia case, pleaded guilty, and by the way, given the guilty pleas, it is such a direct vindication of District Attorney Fawny Willis's decision to bring these RICO charges, to bring the big sweeping case. Yes, she made the exact right tactical calls, and that is now evidenced by these guilty pleas that she is collecting up one after another after another. And remember, Kenneth Chesbro pleaded guilty to the very conspiracy charge that not only Fonnie Willis brought against him, but that she brought against Donald Trump. And that is a strong indication that, yeah, Fonnie Willis got this conspiracy right. But what does it mean for the federal case? Because right now, only Donald Trump is named as a defendant, indicted in the federal case, and Chesbro and Powell and others are unindicted co-conspirators, but criminally involved in that you know, scheme to overturn the election's results as well. Well, here's what I think it means. We don't know, but here's what it suggests, these guilty pleas in Georgia. I have to believe that Powell and Chesbro's lawyers have already 
if not negotiated guilty pleas and agreed to flip against Donald Trump in Jack Smith's federal prosecution, they are in the process of doing just that. Why do I say that? Why do I infer that from these guilty pleas? Because once Powell and Chesbro plead guilty in Georgia to trying to criminally overturn the election's results, it all but guarantees they will be convicted in Washington, D.C. for trying to overturn the election's results as well. So I don't believe their attorneys would leave them completely exposed, right? Just so directly incriminating themselves in crimes in Washington, D.C. by pleading them guilty in Georgia without having dealt at all with Jack Smith and tried to come up with a way that they could also resolve their criminal culpability in D.C. So stay tuned, friends, because I have a feeling we're going to see some movement in Jack Smith's prosecution of Donald Trump in D.C., and that movement will probably involve folks like Chesbro and Powell cooperating in the federal prosecution as well. Takeaway number four, what will Sidney Powell's credibility be like when she has to crawl up on that witness stand in Georgia and testify against Donald Trump and her other criminal associates? Because there's a whole lot of ugliness to the lies that Sidney Powell told over and over and over again about election fraud that didn't exist. It is always a challenge to try to clean up a really damaged defendant who decides to be a cooperating witness, who decides to plead guilty, accept responsibility for her crimes, and then flip and agree to testify against her co-defendants. You have to make that person credible. You have to be able to clean up their past lies. You have to be able to present those lies to the jury, explain why she told those lies, and try to persuade the jury that she is now telling the truth under oath. That can be a challenge, right? Some might say, once a liar, always a liar. Why should I believe Sidney Powell now? And here is what prosecutors do when they have badly damaged defendants who become cooperating witnesses and who the prosecutors want to put up on the stand to testify in the trial of others, of their criminal associates, their co-conspirators. You know, the three most important words when dealing with a cooperating witness like Sidney Powell are corroboration, corroboration, and corroboration. You want to get all of the evidence that will corroborate, support, reinforce the testimony that Sidney Powell will give at trial. So every email, every text message, every direct message, every contemporaneous note she may have taken when she was dealing with Donald Trump, and all of the written communications of others, and all of the testimony of others that might match up and support and corroborate Sidney Powell's testimony will be collected up by the prosecutors and they will corroborate. They will affirm and support every single thing Sidney Powell says to that Georgia grand jury when she testifies. And that is how you give the jury confidence that the story she is telling now as a cooperator is the truthful story, not what she was saying when she was promising to release the Kraken, right? And here is how some of her testimony will go. You know, she will ultimately say, yes, I told a whole bunch of lies back then about what I knew to be non-existent election fraud. Yes, I was a liar back then. Why was I lying? Because I was working in cooperation and coordination with Donald Trump and others to try to corruptly keep Donald Trump in office. So that will convert deeply damaging evidence and testimony about her previous lies. It will convert it into evidence that actually incriminates Donald Trump because she'll be able to testify, I believe, that's why she was telling those lies. Donald Trump may have directed her to 
engage in this fraudulent scheme to try to help him unconstitutionally retain the power of the presidency. So that is takeaway number four concerning how the prosecutors will be able to clean up Sidney Powell and make her palatable, make her a convincing and believable witness when she has to testify against Donald Trump and her other criminal associates. Okay, friends, let's do the fifth and final takeaway. Now, Sidney Powell and Kenneth Chesbro pleaded guilty to their crimes. They're potentially democracy-busting crimes, but you've probably heard that they won't spend a single solitary minute in jail or in prison because their plea offers were to probation. Doesn't feel right, does it? Let's talk about the implications of those two co-conspirators getting sentences to probation. Um, first of all, that will make presenting their testimony to the jury down in Georgia when they ultimately testify even more challenging because the defense attorneys will cross-examine them, the defense attorneys for Donald Trump, Rudy Giuliani, and the rest of them, whoever decides to go to trial, will say, wait a minute, wait a minute, you admitted that you committed these crimes, you claim you committed them with my client, and you're not gonna be punished at all. You're not gonna spend one minute in prison because District Attorney Willis and her team of prosecutors gave you the gift of probation. Defendant Powell, Ms. Powell, you would say anything these prosecutors want you to say to stay out of jail. Isn't that right? Now, we prepare cooperating witnesses for this kind of cross-examination, but the cross-examination can be very effective. So, you know, we're not going to go back to how important it is to corroborate everything a cooperating witness testifies to, to defeat that line of cross-examination, but let me talk a little bit about another reason these pleas to probation present real challenges. You know, there are defendants who are serving prison sentences right now. Defendants, they're called the J6ers, you know, the people who were part of the mob that Donald Trump told on January 6th, go to the Capitol, stop the certification, fight like hell or you won't have a country anymore. He lied to them, telling them your vote was stolen, your election was rigged, your favorite president is being unconstitutionally taken away from you. Rudy Giuliani, another defendant in Georgia, said, let's go down there and have trial by combat. These are all sharply incriminating statements. But a lot of these people did what Donald Trump, Rudy Giuliani, John Eastman, and others told them to do. They committed crimes at the Capitol on January 6th, and they're sitting in prison for it. Some of them pleaded guilty. Some of them went to trial and were convicted, and they were sentenced to prison time. And yet, the people who put together this criminal scheme, like Kenneth Chesbro and Sidney Powell, are getting sentences to probation. So the hierarchy, the command structure of the insurrection, basically gets off easy, and the people who were following their orders their directives who are implementing their criminal and corrupt scheme to try to stop Joe Biden's win, they go to prison, the boots of the insurrection go to prison while the suits of the insurrection get probation. That doesn't sound right. It doesn't feel right. You know why? Because it's not right. It's an unequal application of the law. But take heart, friends. None of what I just said is a criticism of the way District Attorney Willis decided she needed to deal with the Chesbros and the Powells of the RICO prosecution she's handling. She's doing what she thinks is right to build her case to the bigger criminal fish. And she's only dealing with the Georgia state crimes, not the crimes up in Washington, D.C. involving the attack on the Capitol. But I don't believe Jack Smith is done with Chesbro and Powell, not for a minute. So they may have gotten pleas to probation in Georgia, but I do not believe Jack Smith will ultimately give them guilty pleas to probation in D.C. I believe they will be held accountable in D.C. in the federal case, and I believe they will both 
see the inside of a prison cell for the crimes they committed in concert, in a conspiracy with Donald Trump and Rudy Giuliani and John Eastman and corrupt DOJ official Jeffrey Clark and Jenna Ellis and the others to try to bring an end to our democracy. So don't despair at what seem to be lenient um, plea offers to probation down in Georgia because these people ain't seen nothing yet. And that's because justice matters. Friends, as always, please stay safe, please stay tuned, and I look forward to talking with you all again tomorrow.